Hello. All right. So I was scrolling on the internet and I saw this question and said, what's the craziest thing you've ever done for money? And immediately your mind goes to something like, wow, right? Nope. For me, it was going to college. And so like when I saw this meme, I was like, oh my gosh, this is like my truth. Like this is such a reflection of me. And so I was graduating, you know, super accomplishing in the eyes of others, graduating engineering, but when I looked in the mirror, I still didn't feel satisfied. And so I feel like a lot of people have a need to find success that's significant and meaningful to them, but they just don't know how to do that. And so when I was in college, I read an article and I saw this statistic that said 70% of people have no idea what their purpose is. And then according to the National Center for Education Statistics, 80% of students change their major at least once, and on average change their major three times, which was my story. And so I think you're changing it because you're just trying to find something that you think you might enjoy doing. But since you don't know, you end up doing what you should do. And so you end up listening to maybe what society says success is, or what someone who you care about, who you respect says that you should do, or you might listen to what the economy says that you should do. And so you end up chasing wealth, or status, or even STEM. And don't get me wrong, I love STEM. Like I said, you know, engineer, so science and uh, math, you know, are like poetry to me. Um, but I feel like over the last 10 years, it's been such a push for STEM, and specifically computer programming. And they've, you know, try to frame it as, if you go into computer programming, you'll never have to worry about having a job, and you'll never have to worry about, you know, not making money. But what do you say to the 130,000 people who've just been laid off in tech within the last three months? And so I think you end up climbing these ladders of success only to get to the top both depleted and then like unsatisfied with the view. You're like, I don't like it here. And so like, how do you actually find success that you know, will give you energy and money? I think that's by, you know, as cliche as it sounds, caring about what you do and who you do it for. And so people who work on what inspires them, they often have better outcomes. And so there was a study by Dr. Marina Melvinskia where they took a group of college students and they had them set three goals that they intended to accomplish for the semester. And then they had to report their progress on those goals three times a month. And they found that the students who were more inspired in their day-to-day -day lives set more inspired goals, which resulted in um, making more progress towards those goals. And so I think that's a great case for why caring about what you do is important. And then so like, how can you be successful in helping others if you don't actually listen to them and care about their stories? And I think this is very evident in the world of entrepreneurship. And so 47% of startups fail not because of lack of funding or lack of having the right team, but it's lack of market need. So you're building something that nobody wants. And so I think you know, not only in entrepreneurship, you know, that's why listening to people is important because you should know what problems you're solving for them. Um, but I think beyond business, I think if you're in government, if you work in a nonprofit, if you work in a group, if you have a team members that you're responsible for, or even just helping one person, you need to listen to them and listen to their stories. And so I think a great example of this is a societal problem that is in India. And so I was reading a book called The prosperity paradox, and they were saying how, at the time, this isn't too long ago, probably, I think within the last decade, 50% of homes in India don't have a toilet. And so it results in you know, issues with sanitation, contamination, it ends up in a lot of death. In fact, the leading reason f uh, cause for the death of children under five is diarrhea, and it's due to this contamination and sanitation problem. And so they invested these millions of dollars to go and build these sanitation stations or bathrooms, and they found that people were not using them, like multi-million dollars on this product, project. People weren't using them. And it's because they imposed what the solution should look like on them. Like they put bathrooms and toilets in that look like ours, and this is their idea of what a bathroom should look like. And so if they just included people from that group of people in, you know, in their discussions, they would have had a more culturally competent solution. And so I think that that's a great case for why caring about what you do and who you do it for will lead to success. 
Now, there's a lot of people, you know, that have the school of thought, like, no, you should go and focus on making money, and then you just find a way to be happy with what you're doing. Like, you can create happiness like that. And I agree, you should care about what you're doing, but I feel like it's only sustainable up until a point. And so I wanted to bring up, like, one of, you know, my favorite things that I learned when I was in engineering is this theory that every material or every system has its own inherent or natural frequency. And when it's met with an external or an excitation force of a similar frequency, you have resonance. And when you have resonance, you have more energy that's stored in the system. And so I think that you have to merge, you know, you really have to have something in your life where you care about doing that thing um, because you'll have more energy as a result of it. And so there was a 2016 study in the Journal of Research and Personality um, that found that people who found that felt that they had more purpose in their work made more money than people who felt like their work had a lack of meaning. And so I think this is a financial case for you know, purpose. And I think caring about what you do and caring about who you do it for leaves you to feel like you have a greater sense of purpose. And so my solution for success is to care. And it wouldn't be a talk without an acronym, right? And so CARE, the C is for compassion. Compassion is empathy and action to help others. And I think that we also have, a compassion, have to have compassion for ourselves because we're harder on ourselves and the world tells you all day long about why you shouldn't like yourself, so you need to have compassion for yourself. Number two is authenticity. So you can dance how you would dance, prance how you would prance, stand how you would stand, think how you would think, feel how you would feel, be who you would be. It's important to be true to yourself, true to your values, your beliefs, your emotions. You don't have to worry about behaving in a way people think will you perceive you to be a certain way. Like, do, do what's true to you. And then R is for reflection. Because who are you without solitude and reflection? A manifestation of others' perceptions, mechanic behavior so dreadfully calculated, I think you have to reflect on your experiences and critically think about your own thoughts and your behaviors and your feelings so that you can improve yourself and the lives of others. And then finally, engagement. I think that you have to be involved and invested in and emotionally committed to whatever task you're in or relationships you're in, including yourself and others. And so what happens if you don't do that? What do, what do your Mondays look like without care? I think you wake up emotionally overwhelmed and exhausted. You get to work, you sit in the car, you cry and plead to the Lord, Lord, please just help me get through this day. And for some people, you know, they might not actually be suicidal, but you have the thought that, like, if I just drive off this ramp, you know, I'd be okay if I just left this earth. And so I feel like when you are disconnected from yourself, how can you ever be connected to others? And how, as a society, can we be connected to each other? When we're supposed to be, it's all connected. And so I feel like it's a disservice when you don't care. And then what happens when you do care? What do your Mondays look like when you do care? You wake up happy and excited. Uh, you don't have the stress of tasks that you did previously because you're just inspired. You're constantly like, what if this? What if this? How can I put this together? How can I be more creative? You know, you get to be more creative because you're just in exploratory phase. And then I think also, like, when you're actually involved in it, you have more confidence. You're more competent. When you're more competent, you're more confident. And when you're more confident, it leads you to, like, have a drive for mastery of work. And mastery equals money. And so I think that like when you go to sleep at night, you have you know, all these things that you're feeling, you're happy about your Monday, you can go to sleep more calm and more satisfied. And so for me, I think that everybody deserves to live a life that inspires them and motivates them. And so I think how do you do that? Number one is focus on discovery. So for me, um, when I was graduating, I knew I didn't want to be an engineer. I was desperate. I was like, I got to figure this out. And so I'm messaging, I messaged like 10, 15 people closest to me and said, what's the number one thing that you think I'm good at? To my surprise, I thought it was going to be like smart, analytical, logical, it was communication. And that's actually why I'm here today doing a TED Talk, started throwing myself into communication. But the point is, is like, you should ask people because what you think you might be good at might not be what other people perceive you as good at because sometimes our gifts are so natural to us. They come so easy. And so I would encourage you to do that. Number two, um, personality tests and strength assessments. And so my favorite is one that isn't talked about that much, but it's called values in action. 
And it's based on the idea that when you live in alignment with your values, you can actually be more authentic and more engaged. And then like what you may best produce in the world comes out of who you are and what you value. It's naturally gonna happen anyway. And so um, that test is viacharacter.org. I highly recommend that. And then finally, for you know, finding out you know, what you might care about doing, I would say try stuff. Anything that makes you curious, just throw yourself into it and say, I'm gonna try that. And then you can see if it gives you more energy when you're done with it. Pay attention to conversations where when you're done with the conversation, you have more energy when you're done with it. And I think that might help guide you or lead you to you know, what's for you. And then on the other side, if you live this more inspired life, you might be more likely to be an entrepreneur or entrepreneurial. And so if you are, then you need to sit down and listen to the people that you're gonna be helping. And so you need to find out you know, what their day looks like or their day-to-day -day looks like. You need to learn what um, their challenges, their perception of the challenges or problems in their day. And then you need to find out what they want, what their goals are, what's their current process for achieving those goals, what do they perceive as the challenges or problems in achieving that goal, and so many other things. And if you need help with that, definitely I recommend looking up like a small business development center, a minority business assistance center. Um, you can go on your computer and look up um, accelerators or incubators for businesses. Um, one that I really like is called ICORP, I-C-O-R-P-S. They are specialists in customer dis discussion. Discovery. And so I think that, you know, if you do those things, that you'll probably live a more meaningful life. And so I'll, you know, close with, I think that you have to let your heart lead the way and your brain should follow your heart. And as much as you can, you should wrap your brain around your heart because your brain should be a tool to fulfill the desires of your heart. So that when you wake up Monday morning, you wake up with a smile, you look in the mirror, and you're satisfied, not only satisfied, but you feel alive, because the truth is, you know that you feel good about the work that you're doing in the world. Thank you.